Hey guys, I want to start off a tutorial set on discrete math. I was able to successfully find a few tutorials online, but nothing too extensive. And this is a topic that I feel is extremely important throughout your programming career, if you are a programmer. If you're not a programmer, uh, there are a bunch of other instances where you would want to use discrete math as well. So it's definitely a topic that everybody, in my opinion, should at least get familiar with. I started off discrete math just like everybody else, wanting to finish the class in college as quickly as possible just so I can move on to more basic programming and learn how to program. However, later on I found out how useful of a tool this actually is. It's useful to verify when your logic is flawed or you think it's flawed. So for example, uh, this is a statement that I'm going to talk to you guys about right here, where it's a real life statement and I actually had uh, an issue with my website when I created it. So basically what ended up occurring, I started off the website, created a login system from scratch and when the person logs in, for some reason, anytime they click any other link, it would just redirect them back to the homepage. So I knew there was some kind of flaw here. This was just basically within a big if statement. So this entire expression would evaluate to either true or false. And as you can see, there are a few different parts that are connected. Now the whole if statement looks messy like this. Uh, it's very difficult to read. And even when you're reading it in your IDE, it's still pretty difficult to to see everything. So you could space it out, you could move certain things to the next line to make it clearer for yourself, or you could use discrete math and truthfully prove it. This is one of those things where I definitely needed discrete math in order to see what was wrong with this statement. I'm not going to go through all the other statements I went through, but just one simple example. So pretty much in order to verify that this if statement basically was going to do what it needed to do, uh, the if statement needed to evaluate to true if a certain condition was meant and false for all other conditions. What I ended up doing is every single instance I subdivided into its own separate variable. So for example, I use PQRNS. P is equal to is logged in. So like I said, all of these will evaluate to either true or false. Same thing as is logged in. Obviously I just check to see if the person is logged in. Q I wrote as is set get in. So basically all this does, it checks the address bar to see if the following term is within it. I did not forget the, the exclamation mark. We will cover that later. R, well the next portion of it is set get page. And again, the same thing happens where basically you're just looking at something from the address bar. And the last portion is checking to see if get page is equal to or not equal to a logout. So from this point on, I have my four variables and I can go ahead and, uh, and write this a, a little bit neater. So the first portion is logged in. There is no not symbol or anything like that. So we're gonna do P. The double and in, uh, in PHP just stands for and. So is logged in and not is set and this statement or this statement. Both of these statements are within a parentheses, by the way. So later on, I'm going to cover all the symbols in the discrete math, but currently we're just going to go through and fill some out pretty quick. So P and not this statement. So because Q is this statement, a not in the discrete math is written like that. So not Q. Then we have another and symbol. Then we have parentheses. So then the next portion is this statement. Uh, however, we have another not. So and not r or basically this statement. Well, this statement equals this statement. So we can just write s. We could have actually rewritten this. And let's go ahead and do that. So that we can have this to equal to. And then the not is basically located in here. So we can write it right there. So now that we have the statement, we want to test some different scenarios. So the first scenario is if the person is on uh, the main page index.php and logged in. So if the person is on index.php and logged in, the first thing we're going to check is this person logged in and we're going to substitute each of these values with either true or false. So true and is get in at the address bar. Well, currently no, so that's false. However, because of this not symbol, it's opposite of whatever Q is. So false, opposite of false is true. And 
basically the next thing we're checking is uh, to see if page is located in the address bar. It's not. So the next thing we're going to say is r is false. However, again, the opposite of r is true. Or is the page on log out? It's currently not. The opposite of that is true. The following expression simplifies to true and true and true or true is true. So true and true and true is true, which is basically what we were hoping for. The next portion is we're going to want to see when page is on the logout. So pretty much what we're looking for at this point is, is the person logged in? True. So currently page is equal to logout and the person is logged in. So I guess I should have specified that. So is the person logged in? Yes, so that's true. The next segment is, is the in within the address bar? No, so that's false. The opposite of false is true. So the next portion is the, the get page. Is get page listed? It is, so that's true. And then the opposite of that, the basically the R, not R, is false. Or, and then finally we look at is logout present in S? It is, so that's true, and the opposite of true is false again. So we simplify it to true and true and false. So unless all the statements are true, this is impossible to be true. So this segment is also equal to, well, it's equal to false. So our next test is on index.php, in is equal to one. So this doesn't matter uh, what it does. It's something that I did for myself uh, on the website. However, if we substituted the following p and not q and r not s, we get that is the person logged in, that's true, and is the following expression set, that's true. However, we're checking for not this, so that's false. So then it doesn't matter what we get the rest of here, we know the true and false, it's just going to equal false. The last portion that I really wanted to do was when it's a, a, a different page. So we have index.php page is basically equal to whatever. So at this portion, is the person logged in true? Is the in present? It's false. So the opposite of false is true. So that's true. And uh, the last portion is get page present. It is. So the opposite of that is false. Or the last last portion is um, is the page logged out, uh, or is the page equal to log out? No, so that's false, and the opposite of false is true. So true. So this comes out to true and true and false or true evaluates to true. So although the statement should have been false, it's evaluating to true. So I knew there was an error right here. Pretty much what I ended up doing was. I substituted this or with an and. So pn not q and not r and not s. So we can just copy over the values again to see if, if they make any sense. So true and true and true and true evaluates to true. Okay, so that one's good. For the next portion, true and true and false and false. So true and true and false evaluates to false. Okay, so that one's good. The last one, true and false, and I guess I should have done this one. Let's see what the implications are. R is get page. Is get page available? No, so the opposite of that is true. So true and uh, the last one is, is logout available? No. So the opposite of that is true. So that's true. So that's true and false and true and true, which comes out to false. Uh, I guess we didn't even have to do this this time because false is still right there. And then the last one, this one should evaluate to false this time. So true and true and false and true. So now we're getting a true and true and false because false and true is equal to false. So that equals to false, which is exactly what I was hoping would be the case. So pretty much I found out that this was the issue within this whole thing. So instead of an or statement, 
I just ended up replacing it with an AND statement and everything was working. I hope you guys look forward to seeing more of these discrete math tutorials. This was just a first intro and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it to see a real life example of how discrete math is actually useful, uh, especially when it comes to programming.